So that's how we would balance Vata. Now we're going to start to look at how we will balance the next dosha, which is Pitta. To understand and treat Pitta, Pitta and its elements, it's fire predominantly and a little bit of water. But when you think of the water of Pitta, think of it more like steam. It's more like humidity. It's more like this climate now. It's because of the Pitta that this fire and water mix. It, we're praying that the water is not going to mix too much and the Pitta won't create that energy here. The qualities, the first one is hot. So anywhere where there is heat is Pitta dominant. So we see a lot of that environment. We saw that in the qualities of our food before with the temperature as well as its internal qualities, but also in the nature of our expression. How is your expression? Is it hot? Is it directed? Is it out there? It brings in this quality of sharp. How is my voice? Is it sharp? Is it penetrating? Is it pushing through you? That would be more Pitta. I'm sure you know some people that you're like, oh, they're Pitta, just by the way they talk. Uh, so all of these qualities will tell you about them. Now it's also sharp in terms of a point. So if the person has a lot of sharp, pointy features on their face, then that will be more Pitta. If the building has a lot of points to it, then that will be more Pitta. Anywhere where there's a point, there's more Pitta. In Feng Shui, the Chinese system of understanding harmony in a home through the energies that the home creates, they try not to use so many points because of the Pitta that's there. In the Indian system of that, they go, oh, well, actually, it's not good or bad. We use points for different environments, different buildings. If I was building a warrior's building and an army thing, then I want a bit more Pitta. I want them to be in that state. So I'm going to use some points, some sharp sculptures for that purpose. Penetrating. How does it penetrate into the body? So what's chili like? You only just need to rub chili on your skin. <laughs> yeah. And it's penetrating. Yeah. If you do like those little chili patches that people put on. Yeah. It penetrates right in. So these qualities penetrate deep into the tissues. Slightly oily, whereas kapha is oily, pit is slightly oily. Greasy, fast. The difference between vata and it's mobile in all sorts of directions is pitta is like, that's what I'm going for. It's goal orientated. The more that it does something, the more that it'll be like, I know what I'm doing and this is how I do it. And I'm like, that's what I'm working towards. Very good at working towards a goal quickly. Spreading. So it spreads outwards in all directions. So, and it likes to rise upwards. Now, a lot of people will say, when I introduce a big in-depth five elements class, I'll say, what about the qualities of fire? And they'll say, oh, chaotic, unpredictable. But actually fire is very predictable. If you light a candle, we know exactly what the fire is going to do. It's going to burn upwards and it's going to spread outwards. It's always these same qualities, spreading and upward rising. It's only what that makes it unpredictable. Wind. Yeah? If there's a lot of wind, now the fire could go anywhere. That's the Vata quality. It's going to make it move in all sorts of directions. Before that, the fire was stable. It's the same with a person. People say, oh, that fiery, pitta dominant person, they're a bit unpredictable, but actually they're predictable. We know that we, if we annoy them and we do this, they're going to react like, ah, <laughs> they're predictable. We know what's going to take place. Yeah. So this quality is the same. Inside that personality, they want to rise to the top of their field and spread their fame across the world. <laughs> it's the same qualities the whole time, rising and spreading that are there. Its taste is predominantly sour. So alcohols have a lot of this sour fermented taste to them. A lot of pitta to those. Function. Right? The functions of metabolism. So all our transformation, change, digestive change is very key for this pitta. Digestion. All of the digestion of our nutrients. It's pitta that takes control of this. The regulation of our appetite and our thirst. So if the person is like, I'm really thirsty and I need to eat all the time, then we know there might be an imbalance of pitta. Or if the person's like, I'm never thirsty, I never need to eat, then there might be a deficiency of pitta. Huh? So we might need to bring the qualities that balance. Hormones and enzymes. 
So if there's a problem in the hormonal system, there's likely some challenge with Pitta that's taking place. Intelligence. Now these people are generally scientifically intelligent. They're great at adding up numbers, specific detail, seeing all of the qualities and putting them together. It's because of my Pitta that I have quite a scientific mind and the ability to look at things and add up all the numbers and put all those qualities together. Generally, people with good amount of Pitta, they lean towards the Western scientific model because they can add up lots of categories and try and put them together to understand the whole. It's courage, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go for this, I'm gonna go for it because that's what I need to do. It doesn't matter if this person's saying that and other people say it's not right, it's what I think is right and I'm just gonna do it. It's the quality of our complexion and our eyesight. So we need a bit of fire in order to be able to see. Without that, we can't see at all. If there's a lot of which colors, orange and red, the next slide, then we're going to have more pitta that's dominant for that. So if you see orange and red colorations that are there, the eyes, lots of orange and red to that, then we know that pitta is dominant for some reason. And if we looked at those highly heating foods, it wasn't just chili, it was deep fry, red meat, oils, and the spices. They were all very pitta imbalancing. But also we've got a lot of toxins in our modern world that are also heating too. All of these will influence the eyes. Now, what do you think is going to be the animal to remember Pitta? A fox, yeah, that's a great one. It's got red and orange colours on it. It's a little bit active. It likes to eat meat. It's also got a little bit of vata to it as well because it likes to hide a bit. It doesn't necessarily always want to be out there. It's not so much like, yeah, look at me. <laughs> that's more Pitta. And it's like, yeah, look at me. Everyone wants to look at me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> A tiger or a lion, they can be very much pitta. They can digest lots of red meat. Their negative emotions like anger, direction. They can do full power intensity with their run, but they can't do it for very long. Yeah. They burn themselves out. <laughs> no, it's the same with these pitta qualities. They're like, oh. oh. <laughs> so we've got our lion there to represent our pitta. Pitta imbalance characteristics. Imbalance Pitta has got so much joy. It's like people just like, wow, look at this Pitta person. They're enterprising and idealist. They think that the world should run this way because they've figured it out. <laughs> they've assessed all of the possibilities. Now, I can do this in 30 minutes, so you should be able to do it in 30 minutes too. <laughs> so assessing all those qualities that are there. Energetic and organized. They've figured out all the specific detail. They've written their pre-plans and notes. They've got their books out right now and they're taking notes. All of those things have more of that pitta quality to it. Often a charismatic leader. They really suit towards leadership roles you know, because they want to take the position of power. So they're good at going, this is what you need to do and assessing all of those parts. Lively and friendly. In their positive, they're like, yeah, they can bring people up and really bring life to a situation. Curious and broad interests. Because of that scientific mind, they're assessing so many things and bringing them all together. Radiant, warm skin, how often freckles. When we think of like the real pure pitta type, in, not in this culture, is red hair with white skin. You know, they generally have freckles all over them these little dots all over them, and they burn easy from the sun. The heat already is like, ah, I can't handle it. You don't get as many of those here because you live in the tropics. So your bodies have adapted to it. And have been like, oh, I'm not gonna be so affected by the sun, so I'm gonna create more of the dark skin, and more of the vata quality there that allows us to adapt to the sun. Good appetite and digestion. So they need to eat regularly, but it's still not out of control. Now, if we go for the out of balance pitta, it's quite the opposite. Now, we see this woman and she's like overloaded with tasks. She's put too many things. But if it was really a pure out of balance pitta, she would be stressed out as well. She'd be like sweating and oh my God, there's so many things and there's too much for me to do. And now I'm angry and I'm gonna blame someone. Someone else put all of these tasks in front of me. Who's the person to blame? You didn't do this properly or that properly. They start to externalize. It's not because of me. 
pressures themselves and others. Excited and too time conscious. It's like, yeah, I want to do that. And oh, the time, we can fit it all in, I can get there, I can drive between here and that part of Jakarta and just fit in that and I can get across to there. But then if something happens in the plan, it's like, oh no, I put so many things in here and now I've got all of these tasks that overload. Pitter in balance doesn't do that. It really sees it all logically. Task oriented and critical. They're all about the task. It's like goal focus. This is what we need to do team and that is what we're going for. And the problem is that sometimes they can burn people along the way because they're like, this is exactly what we need to do. We're so focused on that. And sometimes it's really good to have that pitter person in charge when something needs to get done. Sometimes it's like, oh yeah, people get burnt, people get burnt. But we built the building <laughs> and it was good because of that role. However, if they were more balanced, they would have been able to still do that leadership quality still bring all the people together, but they would have done it in this uplifting, joyful way where it united the people through their strength. Now, those same qualities you'll see, Pitta, with those that you know that are dominant Pitta, the more, in the same day, you could see that switch. It's like, yeah, I'm happy, I'm getting everyone together, and then all of a sudden, I'm overloaded, there's too many things. You didn't do that role properly, you didn't roll, and now I'm ruthless, goal, get this happening. And all of a sudden they turn into this other form of pitter as well. Irritable, quick tempered, activity overloaded, so many tasks, blemishes and acne. This is a very common thing for pitter. Skin conditions, especially if they're a red, fiery type, a more dominant pitter. Gray hair and balding. So if someone's balding really easily or getting gray hairs quickly, then maybe more pitta. I started getting my first gray hairs when I was 12 years old. Uh, so pitta was something that was strong in my constitution from an early age. So I would need to do lots of things to try and balance that. Instead, my family took me traveling in the tropics everywhere. <laughs> so I spent lots of times in heat environments and I had to learn how to balance that myself over time. Try to think less. <laughs> Use that scientific mind a little bit less or I'm probably going to go grey really quickly. Uh, ulcers and stomach upsets is this burning fire. It starts to digest. It burns through your own tissues inside. Aggravating pitta. So if we want to get those imbalances, this is what we can do. We can use all drugs, especially alcohol, cigarettes and marijuana. The liver is a big pitta organ. Each one of the organs in the body is vata, pitta or kapha dominant. So the liver is very pitta dominant. So the more that it works, the more it creates heat. It's connected towards these red skin imbalances in the body. So very connected there. Alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, they all influence the liver. Engage in frustrating or intensely focused activities. So I know a pitta person where they would be at work doing really frustrating work, organizing lots of people, and then they'd come home and they'd try and do Sudoku puzzles and, and, and do those little puzzle games. It's like, oh my God, you need to take a break from those activities. You need to balance those qualities. You don't have your break time where you're doing puzzles as well. It's like, right. Eat spicy foods and emphasize tomatoes, chilies, raw onions, and yogurt in your diet. Again, we likely start to get addicted towards that which imbalances us. I don't have the time to go into in-depth Ayurveda understandings, but Ayurveda explains the difference between a healthy craving and an addictive craving. I know some pitta friends of mine that already at 30, they are bald. They, they don't have hair anymore and they love chili so much. We'll go out and eat Indian and he'll say, I want the hottest thing on the menu and could you bring some chili on the side? <laughs> and he'll mix that in. He's dripping with sweat as he's eating it and he's like, this is so good. <laughs> like, just no understanding of what's balancing. But he also loves to smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol. He's into all of these addictive responses. Uh, it's a complex reason to explain why, but if we get some more time, I can understand that. The importance here is, if you're experiencing the out of balance symptoms, trust the dosha, not what the body's craving is. Yeah? Then once you start to create balance, then you'll get proper cravings again. You'll get balanced cravings rather than addictive cravings. 
exercise at the hottest time of the day. So if you want to build more pitta, you should go for a run in the midday. <laughs> wear tight clothes and always wear a hat that traps the heat in. This is where the heat's meant to come off of our body. Now, if we're constantly blocking it in, it's not a good thing. Different to like, oh yeah, I'm out in the sun. I'm going to be in the sun for a while. We might need to put it on. Never fast or detoxify your body. They need to get rid of the excess heat because they build excess. Avoid cool, fresh, peaceful places. So spend all of your time in the city. Never go to a forest or a beautiful waterfall. The environmental medicine, lifestyle medicine, these are so powerful. If you've got a lot of pitta, go and spend some time in a waterfall. Sit in a forest. Come here to Songolas. It's like, oh, green. <laughs> it has a beautiful effect on the pitta. Um, snack on highly salty foods and eat as much red meat and salted fish as possible. Uh, you know, I think in Indonesia you've got those salted fried fish little things that you can eat. <laughs> like, that would be super pitta dominant. <laughs> yeah. Okay, repress your feelings of irritation without seeking to serve or change the situation. Now this is important, anger is not bad. Anger is there for you to work out something at the moment is not working properly. I need to figure out what it is and I need to figure it out for the sake of everyone. Because that's what Pitta's role is, is to serve everyone. It's not to serve for itself. And you'll see the difference with a Pitta that's serving a higher power is massive. We'll go into this in the afternoon class on why that is. But when they're serving something higher than themselves, either spirit or a king or something that's in this other role, then it changes the way they react completely. It changes how much Pitta is built in their body. So they figure out, I'm angry because something's not working for the team. Huh? How can I fix it with my scientific mind so that next time that problem doesn't happen again? Lifestyle to balance pitta. How do we balance it? So avoid excessive heat and steam. So here in the tropics, you don't need to do hot yoga. <laughs> so now there's this whole thing with this hot yoga. It's like, oh, that's how Bikram, that's how yoga was done in India because it was a hot climate. So therefore we should mimic India. How big is India? Is India all hot? Not at all. Their, their logic for doing it like India, it's like, Part of India is the Himalayas. <laughs> like, so it's all different climates. Uh, we should do yoga in a climate or a space that's most balancing to us. In this climate, we don't need so much heat. The best heat comes from inside. <laughs> yeah. Do fire practices in your yoga that makes the heat draw from within and not from externally. Limit salt intake and heating oils, especially fried things. Eat cooling, non-spicy foods and plenty of ghee. Now you could use coconut oil. Traditionally, ghee would be the medicine for pitta. Now ghee is sort of like butter, but it's a special type of medicinal butter. They've cooked the butter until the hard to digest pieces have all clumped together. So the bits that would normally go bad in the fat because of heating, they all stuck together and then they got rid of those. And what was left with was a fat that was really thin, really penetrating. It flushes out the liver and the gallbladder. It's a fat that's cooling rather than the deep fried fats that they scooped off that were heating. This one cools the body. It's really beneficial. The fat that we've used today for some of the dishes has got ghee in it. We've also used coconut oil and olive oil as well, but for some of them, the pitta balancing, especially vata as well, the deficiency, ghee is really beneficial. Drink cool drinks, not iced. So we don't need iced drinks. How long have we had ice for? About 50 years, less. Yeah. We have not had ice for a long time. How long have we had ice in the tropics? Definitely not. Uh, it's really cooling towards, it really damages the digestive function. Something that's cool is okay, but icy colds, far from what the body needs. Exercise during the cooler part of the day, so early morning, afternoon. 
spend time in visually calming natural environments like the ocean, sunrise, waterfall, these sorts of things are really great for pitta. Dominate in sweet, bitter and astringent taste. So these are the tastes that pitta needs to have the most of.